Good morning. morning. Welcome to Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We are glad you're here today. We've got a load of announcements and they are very important announcements so pay attention to them and take your bulletin and refer to them if you need to during the week. First thing is we've heard a lot about all the devastation that's happened in Kentucky over the last couple weeks with the flooding and just it's it's the sadness there. There is a a outreach or emergency relief wing of the United Methodist Church called UMCOR and that group is on the ground immediately when disasters happen and they do a lot of good work in our name and on our behalf. So if you'd like to make a donation to support their relief efforts, you may do so. You just make a check out to the church and in the memo line put flooding or Kentucky or something like that. Then we'll pull all that money and send one check to UMCOR. And a reminder that 100% of what you give goes to the relief effort. UMCOR is funded through our apportionments and, and through other means, not through your donations here. So, um, so you'll know this money will get to, to where it's needed. So please consider that. Also, we've been trying to get together socially once a month during the summer to kind of get things back to some semblance, semblance of normalcy. And on the 17th of August, we're, gonna, we're renting out one of the theaters at the Raleigh Grand, and we're going to watch The Goonies. I think that's a new movie. And I uh, invite you to be here for that. I'll actually be there for that. Show up. We're going to try to get around, around 6 o'clock and everybody kind of go in together. You're on your own for concessions, but everything else is covered. The cost of the admission is there. It's covered by the church. So we hope you'll be there. Traditional school starts back on the 29th of August. Um, on the 28th, on Sunday, we will have promotion Sunday. So that means that if you are a young person, you're changing Sunday school classes that this coming year, that's a Sunday you'll change. But also our fourth graders get their Bibles from the church. So if you are a fourth grader, a rising fourth grader, or you know one, let us know so we can get a nameplate ready for them and have a Bible here to, to give to them on that Sunday. Also, we now have a director of children's and youth ministry, Ashley Yeoman, right there. She's already just doing all sorts of good things, um, including Vacation Bible School that starts today. But evidently in the pew notebooks, the end of each pew, there's a notebook. I hope you'll read through it, pass it down. In there, there's some, what do we call it, a registration form for youth and children ministries. It's a little database that, that Ashley will keep and be able to contact you about specific ministries. August outreach, outreach Collection is for our Great Minds young people. And Great Minds, as you know, is a after school tutoring and mentoring program that's been going on here at the church for many, many years. And we're collecting um, school supplies. You can go to a certain place and you can find out what we specifically we need or you can contact Lucinda or Leah and they can let you know. Any comments about that, Leah? All right, Backpack Buddies, incredible ministry. We've been involved with it many years and really it's for, um, for young people with food insecurity And what that means is on Friday after school, they receive some food during the week and meals at school. On Friday afternoon, on the way home, they receive a backpack full of food that will sustain them for the weekend. They bring the backpack back on Monday empty. It's refilled during the week, and it just just keeps them um, in in good nutrition for the entire year. It used to be you would fill fill up the backpack yourself. COVID things, it change, it's changed now, so you make a donation that funds the backpack, the contents. $300 will fund a student for the entire school year, or if that's just overwhelming for you, you know, $10, $5, $50, whatever you want to give, we'll pull all that and forward it, and they will uh, get the, the requisite number of backpacks organized. So thank you for that. Also, I notice that every time I send you an email, you disregard it. Um, or we'll give you the benefit of the doubt, it's in your spam folder. So um, please check that, most church emails go to spam. So that's good news. And finally, Bible study. If you have not been in a Bible study with me, you've never been in a Bible study. I just want you to know that right now. How many Bible studies do you know have a disclaimer the, the first week out uh, and warn you? So I hope you'll, you'll come be part of our Bible study this, this year. August, we're going to start the 25th of August. We have a 10 a.m. and a 7 p.m. class. We've been, hy- we've, been, we've been virtual the last two years, but this year will be a hybrid. So you can uh, join us via Zoom, or you can be there at the Hyder House in those times. We'll ask questions like, what is the Bible? Where did it come from? 
Did it drop from the heavens? No. No, sorry about that. Anyway, different thing. How come different groups have different Bibles? You know, if, if, you, know, if you go to St. Francis Catholic Church, different Bible than we have at, at Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church. You go to the Greek Orthodox Church, different Bible. You go to the Coptic Church, different Bible. What's going on? Well, come to Bible study and find out. Anyway, we hope you'll be there. And um, any questions are fair. That's the thing we'll talk about. We encourage dialogue and discussion about these sacred texts. All right, any other comments or questions or thoughts as we begin our time of worship? If not, I invite you just to um, take a deep breath in and then out, and let's use this time to center ourselves for worship. I invite you to stand now for our invocation and our opening hymn, which is number 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Let us bow for prayer. Loving and gracious God, during this time, we welcome your presence into our lives anew. We welcome it as we seek your peace. So as we gather, turn our hearts to you that we may allow your love to flow through us and out into this world. In Christ's name, we offer this and all our prayers. Amen.
Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Bill Speary, and the Psalter lesson for today is Psalm 100, commonly known as the Psalm of Thanksgiving. It speaks of an invitation to the whole earth to know and to worship God. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give, him, give thanks to him, bless his name, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all the generations. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you've been around Pleasant Grove for, for a number of years, you may remember it. periodically we'll have times during worship where we'll just lift up a certain ministry of the church. And we thought as we're hopefully getting things back to normal, finally, hopefully, in the, in the coming days as we move to a new season of ministry in the fall, that um, it was important to raise up all the different ministry opportunities that we have here at Pleasant Grove. One of the most important, as you know, is the music ministry. As you've, you'll see, you've already heard a lot today, and you'll hear a lot more as we move th through the rest of the service. And the central part of that music ministry, obviously, are the folks who are here before you uh, here today. But I'd like to invite Chris to come forward and share his insights and opportunities for this fall. Chris? Thank you, Jay. Good morning. Well, if you don't know me, my name is Chris Dotson. I'm the Director of Worship Arts here at Pleasant Grove. And this time of year, I always get really excited because it feels like the week before school starts. We all take a break during the summer, and then when school starts up in the fall, we really get our music programs up and going. And I just get excited because I got to start planning music, and I got to start encouraging people to check us out. This year is especially exciting because we've learned the importance of just not of making music, but of being together, especially during the pandemic. We still made music during the pandemic, but don't ask my choir members how they felt about singing a song into their cell phones and having to digitally watch themselves a couple weeks later. It's not so much about the music, it's about being together and being in the same room and enjoying each other's company and getting our science has proven our brain waves kind of gel together when we're in the room together making music together. So I want to share with you some of the opportunities we have to be uh, involved in music that you have to be involved in music here at Pleasant Grove coming up. I want to start with the early service. At the 8.30 service, we have the coffee course. And that, coffee, that choir is unique because we feed you coffee and breakfast because you woke up so early to be here. Um, the good thing about that choir is they rehearse before the service. They, they re the rehearsals are before the service begins, and they only sing uh, two to three times uh, a month. Um, I have to say this because I'm at the 11 o'clock service, but the more important choir... I'm just kidding, guys. Guys, I'm just kidding. We've got some coffee chorus folks here. Uh, the, of course, is the 11 o'clock choir, the chancel choir. Uh, this choir sings more often, more regularly, and we rehearse every Wednesday night over in the choir room. And um, <coughs> this... Uh, uh, Basically, the music that I get to pick is for the folks who show up. So if we have a couple of men and a lot of women, that, kinds of deci that decides what kind of music I'm picking. If we have a lot of men and a couple of women, that, chooses what, that decides what music I'm choosing. So we invite folks to come and be a part of the choirs and come check us out. Now, if you're a little hesitant about making the long-term commitment about being a part of a choir, um, I invite you to come check out the Christmas Cantata Choir. Um, this group, you know, we only sing once a year. Uh, we sing for the Christmas cantata. It's fun Christmas music. Everyone likes Christmas music. We only rehearse on Saturdays. Um, so it's only a couple of Saturdays during the season coming up. And if you want to come check out choir, see if this might be for you, this is a great choir to come be a part of. Um, besides giving a listening CD so you'll be able to practice your part at home, I'm happy to meet with individuals uh, throughout the week to see if they need a little extra help getting their singing voice ready. However, if you're not a singer, and let's say you're more of an instrumental person, um, we have our handbell choir. Uh, you've, they, this group uh, plays about once a month through the, throughout the season, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it does take a little bit of skill, so if there's n people who are interested in starting, um, I would love to get a beginner's class for adults or youth to kind of get, the get, the, get their uh, hands around how to ring handbells. 
Um, and then definitely if you have more experience, please let me know. Um, also, um, as you saw, we like to feature instrumentalists during um, special, uh, special times of the service. Thank you to our flutes for playing today. If you're an instrumentalist and you want to come play a solo or a duet, please let me know. If you're not quite ready for prime time, I like to get my instrumentalists together and maybe we'll get together and play on an opening hymn. So if it brings you back to your old band or orchestra days where you're one in two or three or four or five or six, that might be a great place uh, to be a part of. I recommend that high school level or above. And so if you or you know someone who plays a musical instrument, they should be playing with us. I'd like to get that started maybe about uh, once a month. And finally, the most exciting thing that I'm excited about is uh, we will be starting back our kids' choir this fall. I'm really thankful that Amanda Schreiner has agreed to come get our kids together, together get them singing. And so please keep an ear out as the as the fall comes closer about how to get your kids involved with kids choir. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. About the last 30 years, we have taken time during each service to welcome folks to our congregation. We want folks to know that the, day, the time you walk into this door, this is your faith community, even if it's just for today. It's just as much your faith community as it is anybody else's. And one way we acknowledge that is by extending our welcome through the offering of a loaf of bread. And the symbolism behind this is that you're eating with us. You're at the table. You're part of the family, even if it's your first time here. We, of course, we hope you'll come back, but at least for today, you're part of the family. So I'm going to walk out there. And if you've never received bread from Pleasant Grove, just give me the signal. I'm going to hand you a loaf of bread. No questions asked. I'm just handing you a loaf of bread. Oh, come on. Well, you just need one. Because you, you, you're with Simon. We're going to give you one of those. Man and bread. All right. We got past that, past that down. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, come on. Oh, I know. Where's Ronald? I'm going to give Ronald some bread up here. Yeah, that's where I'm going. All right. We'd like everyone now to stand, turn to those gathered around you, and extend the peace of Christ to all. Good. All right. Children's Church. Kids are leaving that way. So head on over there with Ashley if you'd like to go to Children's Church. Y'all are getting the hang of this passing the peace now. This is like old times where you're wrestling and you're yelling and stuff. That's, that's great. We are glad. That's what we do here. We're family. And that, that's beautiful. All right. You'll you notice that um, instead of a sermon, in just a second, we have liturgical fun. That's not a code where I'm not trying to hide a sermon um, on a liturgical fun. Four times a year, about, usually, there are five Sundays in a given month. Now, you're saying, well, that doesn't make sense. Today's the first Sunday of August. Well, I missed last Sunday. Last Sunday was the fifth Sunday in July. And so we, we used to use those to celebrate music, and that's what we're, we're doing today. And so, well, let me see this. I talked about this a few weeks ago. I, I named the game show Name That Tune. If you ever heard of that game show, raise your hand. Name that tune. Good. It should work then. All right. After that service, Jill and Chris and I were talking. That would be a great thing to do at worship sometime. So this is that sometime. And so what's going to happen here in just a minute, we, we, we're going to, I'm going to give you a hint. And then Chris, or no, Jill is going to give you some notes. And if you can name that hymn tune, I want to see a hand. If you blurt it out, you're disqualified, and you're asked to leave. Um, and, um, and if you cannot get it, 
in that number. Oh, no, we're reducing the number of notes. How many are we going to start with? I think we'll start with three. We're going to start with three notes. Okay. Anyway, if you don't get after three notes, we'll give you another hint, and then you'll get five notes, and then if you don't get it, we'll give you ten notes, and after that, you are asked to leave. So, anyway, we're, we're, before we get to that, though, we're going to hear the gospel lesson for today. It's, it's the gospel lesson for this, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. It comes from the twelfth chapter of Luke's gospel, verses 32 to 34. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to look for a hymn book. Here we go. Back in the 18th century, the founder of the Methodist movement, John Wesley, published his rules for singing for his congregations. And they're at the beginning of the hymnal. And these were written in 1761. So I'm just going to give you the first direction. Learn these tunes before you learn any others. Afterwards, learn as many as you please. So I hope you're doing that. So you should know these tunes. So the first one you're going to hear is from the 8th century. 8th century, a long time ago. Bob Starks may remember it, a couple others. <laughs> but 8th century Ireland. All right? So, three notes are coming your way. Don't yell it out. Raise your hand and let's hear it. Okay, we're not giving you the rhythm intentionally. We're just giving you the note. Oh, no, Adam. Adam, what is it? That is correct. Oh, man. It's number 451. Let me give you some other hints, though, in case you, don't, you didn't hear what Adam said. The two name is slain. It's named for a region in Ireland where St. Patrick reportedly shared the gospel with the local Druids. The original poet wrote a prayer asking God to be his vision, his wisdom, and his best thought by day or by night. Be thou my vision. It's 451. Let's sing one verse. number two. Sing them exactly as they are printed here without altering or mending them at all. And if you have learned to sing them otherwise, unlearn it as soon as you can. All right. Next hint. This hymn was penned by a Protestant Reformation leader. You're only getting two notes for this. It's okay. We may give you one. Okay. Two notes, Jill. Come on, how hard is that? Dan? Okay, hold on. Let me give you another hint. In hopes of popularizing the Reformation movement, Luther used a tune borrowed from a popular drinking song of its day. Five notes, please. Yes, Alana. That is correct. A mighty fortress is our God. Oh, you said you didn't say is our God. All right, number 110. We are going to sing one verse of a mighty fortress is our God. Number 110.
sing all. See that you join with the congregation as frequently as you can. Let not a slight degree of weakness or weariness hinder you. If it is a cross to you, take it up, and you will find it a blessing. All right, this hymn was written by Thomas Ken in 1674. Adam? No? Okay. He was called English first hymnist. You're only getting two notes. Oh, come on, folks. It's church. Okay, let me give you another hint. This hymn originally had 13 verses. We're going to sing them all <laughs> if you don't get this. Okay. And, um, okay, how many? Give them, we're giving them four notes. Anybody? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Let me give you a You sing it every single week? Doxology. Ah, that was too easy. The doxology. Uh, Number 95. Let's hear it. What's the real title? That's a good question. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Sing lustily and with good courage. Beware of singing as if you are half dead or half asleep. But lift up your voice with strength. Be no more afraid of your voice now, no more ashamed of it being heard than when you sung the songs of Satan. All right. Good work. Here you get your... How many... This, this is too easy. You're getting two notes. Should I even give my hint? We're, anybody have a guess? Two notes. It's really easy. Okay, Amazing Grace, Marilyn Kennedy. Thank you. Written in 1772 by John Newton, who was converted to Christianity because of a miracle at sea. And um, this is one of the most popular hymns of all time, I think. So let's sing one verse. Oh, 378. You don't need a hymnal. modestly. Do not bawl so as to be heard above or distinct from the rest of the congregation, that you may not destroy the harmony, but strive to unite your voices together so as to make one clear, melodious sound. All right. That's not going to be easy. Here we go. This song has its origin from the best-selling best novel, Seal and Say written by Susan Warner in 1860. Two notes. No. Give. Okay. We're getting... Jesus loves me. That is correct. Jesus loves me. All right, this, in the story, a little boy is dying and his Sunday school teacher comforts him by taking him in his arms, rocking him, and making up this little song. Upon reading this story, hymn writer William Bradbury composed a childlike musical score to go along with the song. Number 191, Jesus Loves Me.
sing in time. Whatever time is sung, be sure to keep with it. Do not run before, nor stay behind it, but attend close to the leading voices and move therewith as exactly as you can. And take care not to sing too slow. This drawling, this drawling way naturally steals on all who are lazy, and it is high time to drive it out from us and sing all our tunes just as quick as we did at first. Okay, here's one that everyone in this room knows probably. Even though this was originally in Latin, it was written by an Englishman named John Francis Wade in 1743. You're only getting two notes. Oh, come on. Yes, Molly. Nope, that's close. I mean, that's that a good guess. Adam Schreiner. How great thou art. Oh, that's close, but no. Let's, we, okay, let me give him another hint. After Wade's death, an Anglican minister named Reverend Francis Oakley came across the Latin manuscript and translated it into English. However, his first attempt to at translate, well, I better not give that much. You can't give, give what he said? Okay. His first attempt at translating was not very good, and the first line was, Ye faithful approach ye. What? O oh, come, all ye faithful. Ye faithful approach ye. No wonder it didn't catch on at first. Okay. <laughs> all right. Very good, very good. Page 234, one verse. spiritually, having an eye to, to God in every word you sing. Aim at pleasing him more than yourself or any other creature. In order to do this, attend strictly to the sense of what you sing, and see that your heart is not carried away with the sound, but offered to God continually. So shall your singing be such as the Lord will approve here and reward you when he cometh in the clouds of heaven. All right. This song is an African-American spiritual written in the 18th century. Uh, other, others, it was originally one verse. Other verses have been added according to oral tradition across the years. And we're going to give you how many notes? We're, we're thinking three. Three notes. Wait. Uh, yes, Alana. Yes, let us break bread together. We used to sing it every communion Sunday um, when I was growing up. Okay, let us break bread together. Um, it's number 618. We're going to sing one verse. Just have one bonus song, and um, this 
psalm, this hymn, originally appeared in the second edition, not the first edition, of Songs of Praise, published in 1931, composed in the Scottish Isles. You're getting two notes. Nope, that is incorrect, Kenny. Give him, okay, let me give you another hint. In the Songs of Praise, the editor explains that there was need for a hymn to give thanks for each day. English poet and children's author <clears throat> Eleanor Fargian <clears throat> had been, quote, asked to make a poem to fit the lovely Scottish tune. How many know? Yes, ma'am. Morning has broken. I didn't even have to get to any sort of reference to Cat Stevens. But very good. Very good. Let's sing one verse. Uh, Morning has broken, number 145. for that. We um, have to remember, music is central to the worship experience, has been for thousands of years, and the classic hymnal, of course, is the book of Psalms. So I just uh, direct your attention now to the prayer, weekly prayer list that's printed in your bulletin, and I just highlight the first sympathy, the only sympathy in the bulletin, to Terry Louder on the loss of her uncle. Just a couple weeks ago, we were mourning with them the loss of Terry's nephew. So nephew passed away young, I think he was 23 years old, 23 or 24 years old, suddenly. And then the grandfather, Terry's uncle, passed away a week later in the same family. And they're, they're just devastated. We need to lift them up in our prayers during this time of grief. Are there other prayers that you would like to share this morning, joys or concerns? Yes, Evelyn. Okay, thank you, Evan, <clears throat> for Sandy Castleberry. Thank you. Yes, Al. Deanna has a birthday today. Oh, Deanna has a birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, Deanna. <laughs> Are there others? Yes, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Are there others? Yes, Adam. Uh, a joy. We celebrated Elise's baptism last week, and uh, another joy is Elise is going to be a big sister. Oh, We're my. expecting in February. Wow. A little girl. Well, all right. Keep those numbers up at the church like that. Thank you. Are there others? If there are no others, there's so many joys and concerns that weigh on our hearts too closely to live publicly. So we always begin our prayer time each week with a time of silent prayer. And I invite you just to lift those prayers to God. We'll follow that with a brief pastoral prayer and as always conclude our, our prayer time with the Lord's Prayer. And the words of that ancient prayer are printed in your bulletin each week. So first let us go now to God in silent prayer. Loving and gracious God, as we, we pause for prayer this morning, once again we confess that we have not been overly zealous in our daily discipleship, and that we've not struggled to really understand or wrestle with the great ideas of faith. And we know we have not really attempted to give you the mastery of our lives. 
Instead, we have tended to live lives centered in self, even when surrounded by a world filled with loneliness and pain and need. We've not been diligent enough in seeking to be Christ to our neighbor in need. So forgive us and help us. Help us to begin in this very moment to be new persons in Christ. And let the love that pours forth from your presence into our lives redirect those lives in every way as we extend your love and your mercy and your goodness into this world. We ask this prayer. We ask all our prayers in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, let's now take a moment as we offer our gifts to God. my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Of my tongue, let my words edify. Let the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight. Take charge of my thoughts both night and day. Yeah. Order my steps in your word. Please order my steps in your word. Water, walk right.
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the many gifts you give to us each and every day of our lives. We pause at this point each week to return a portion of those material gifts to you. We pray they're worthy and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God. The last night of Jesus' life, his earthly life, and he had gathered in an upper room in a home in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. It had been 12 centuries since the time of Moses, but as they gathered in in that upper room, it was as if it was occurring that very day as they shared the traditional foods and they told the story and their hearts were were bound to one another. The Apostle Paul and subsequent to Paul, the Gospel writers, Jesus was host of the meal that evening. He would have recounted the tradition. He would have shared the meaning behind the traditional foods At some point, we know according to Paul, Jesus took the unleavened Passover bread that was on the table. He lifted it towards heaven and gave God thanks for the bread, and then he broke the bread. And as he broke the bread, he said these very cryptic, very mysterious words. He said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. And then he passed it to his friends, and they ate from that loaf. Later, he took the cup that was on the table and lifted it towards heaven and gave God thanks for the cup. And he said to his friends, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink of this always in remembrance of me. And he passed the cup to them and they drank. Shortly after dinner, they they moved to the Garden of Gethsemane, which was a short distance away across the valley. There they were staying the night. Later that evening, Judas came forward with a band of soldiers. They arrested, arrested Jesus. He was tried that night and the next morning and ultimately ended up crucified by midday on Friday. We call Good Friday. By mid-afternoon, his lifeless body was on the cross. So they removed it and placed it in a tomb. End of story. The women went on Sunday morning to pay respect to the body and to repair the body. And what they encountered what we call resurrection. It goes beyond words. In the Gospels, they wrestle with the meaning of of this risen Christ in their midst. Soon after that day, that first Easter, as a community was forming, they would gather on Sunday evening to celebrate that resurrection experience. They celebrate Easter every week. And as they did, they centered around that meal that he had shared with his disciples. As they recounted the tradition of that night, as they gathered in a holy communion, it became the experience of many that in a profound way. It was a sacred moment. So it began to be called a sacrament. And that understanding has been carried down in many Christian traditions down through the generations and to this very room. Here at Pleasant Grove, we practice open communion. All who are here that wish to celebrate with us are welcome to come forward. You'll come at the direction of the ushers. At the front, you'll receive a piece of bread that you'll partake. You'll step to the side. You'll receive a cup. you partake. You may just simply return to your seats by the side aisles. You may kneel for prayer. You may light a prayer candle. But it is our hope, it's just been the hope of generations, that somehow, by the grace and mystery of God's presence, we'll once again be one, one with each other and one with God. Let us now join in prayer. Loving and gracious God, in remembrance of these, your grace-filled acts, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and cup. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, now and forever. 
Amen.
invite you to stand now for our closing prayer and our closing hymn. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us. We pray that we are now empowered to go forth from this sanctuary and give ourselves to others. In Christ's name we offer this prayer. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.